Hey, cast iron fans, I have a new pan that I'd like to show you. I just got it a couple days ago. It was a Kickstarter from the Field Company. I'll put the link to the Kickstarter video in the notes below so you can check it out. This is a number eight, it says right here, and uh, kind of a no frills box. You get a little card here, it says thank you, a little note from, uh, from the brothers that started it. We deeply appreciate your early support. Like I mentioned, this was a Kickstarter. And um, interestingly enough, it doesn't tell you how to season it. A lot of companies feel the need to tell you how to season it. They don't. They do tell you acidic foods will remove the seasoning and they tell you gradual heating is better than heating it up fast. So there's some general principles and um, kind of a little help card. But like I said, it, it's lacking uh, instruction on how to season it. So I'm just gonna use a method that I've used in the past. The pan, my first initial reaction is that it is uh, super lightweight. It is much lighter weight than a comparable number eight. It doesn't have the long fancy handle that I'm accustomed to, you know, the forked handle that stays cool. Now, the benefit is this is shorter, so it's gonna fit in the oven with other stuff. The drawback is this might get hot, so that's to be seen. It has a tiny little lip here, which for sure would be hot, so this looks like I'm gonna to have to use hot pads when, when handling this. Here's the back, Field Company. Their family crest number eight made in USA. And then uh, number 326, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is reminiscent of vintage cast iron, where this lip extends below the surface. So let's see how that's going to feel on my glass stovetop. You know what? It's perfectly flat, perfectly flat. And uh, there'll be kind of an air pocket under here. So with gas, of course, that's not going to matter, but with a stove with a glass top it it's going to be different than the pans that i've used so we'll see how that works the striking difference in this pan is the inside finish i would expect i'll zoom in on that you can see this is very smooth i would expect a great pan to have this type of interior surface well that's on the outside this pan has this buttery soft finish i've never seen anything like it it's like beyond machining. It's almost as if it's been sanded or, or hit with, you know, those, the, the, the uh, sand blasted. It's incredibly soft and smooth. Really, uh, really impressive. I have no idea how it's going to perform, but it seems to me like, uh, like that would be a good thing. Anyway, I bet it cooks a lot like steel with better heat retention. That would be my guess out of the box. So I'm gonna season it with a product called the Crispy Puck. And um, I actually got this with my Stargazer pan and I used it and I kind of poo-pooed it a little bit on the video and I got some, some negative feedback. Uh, a few folks said that I really should give this another try. So I'm gonna season this pan with this product. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is wash the pan in warm water to get whatever wax they've put on it off. I heat the oven up to 170. I'm going to put the pan in there for about 10 minutes just to get it warm to the touch so that this product absorbs well. And then I'll heat it for an hour on 400 and we'll check out how our first seasoning goes. So I'll be right back with you with a washed pan and a warm pan and we'll go ahead and coat it and see how that goes. So I'm just washing it so this is probably the only time this pan will ever see so just give it a good scrub with some dish soap inside and outside. I want to make sure that I remove any wax or anything that's going to impact uh, the seasoning that I want to put on there. And then uh, wash it with warm water. Go ahead and dry this off and pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes just to just to warm it up evenly okay it's been about 10 minutes and pan is for sure warm it's not obviously too hot to touch but it's it's warm for sure and uh here's my crispy puck it's wrapped in like a cellophane 
and uh, I'm just going to give it a generous rubbing. And then I'm going to come back over it with a paper towel and rub everything in evenly. Almost like a wax. And uh, I, I did this one other time with with my uh, with my stargazer. And I found that if you heat this up too much, it it just it's all liquefied and gets everywhere. It's kind of hard to rub in like a wax. So ideally this pan might be a little bit hotter. But because of my experience the last time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep it um, not quite as hot as I as I probably would if I was using a liquid. So I want it to be just a very very thin coating, and I can feel I can really feel how I'm getting it all in all the little cracks and crevices. Now I found that uh, in the past I've held it with my hand when I put it in the oven and wherever my hand was left a mark. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to hold it with the uh, I'm going to hold it with the rag. I don't want my skin oils transferring to the pan at all. I want a nice even seasoning. So I'm just going to hold it like that and uh, give this one more rub. And I've had, uh, I've worried about little paper towel, little lint pieces. It makes absolutely no difference. It burns off as long as there's no big spots. But what I can say is that if there's swirls left, those swirls seem to bake in. So I'm just slowly, I'm almost buffing it like, like you're waxing a car. And uh, we'll see that how it turns out, but I believe it's going to turn out without any streaks, nice and even. So there's the inside. Flip it over, just give the outside one more wipe. I want to make sure that I've gotten everything covered evenly. Got a little bit of buildup in the Made in USA, but that's okay. And uh, there we go, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven here. And bake 400, start. And as soon as that comes up to temperature, I'm going to uh, set the timer for an hour. <laughs> Sorry about that. As soon as it comes up to temperature, I'll set it for an hour, and then um, and then I let it cool naturally over over the course of probably an hour or so after it goes off, and uh, and then we'll check it out, show you how it turned out. Okay, it's been uh, maybe almost two hours. I uh, put it in there for for a full hour at 400, let it gradually come up to heat, and then set the clock for an hour. And look at that. I am pleased. It's not cool enough to actually touch, uh, but that's incredible. No little oil uh, beads like you sometimes get if you've got too much oil. Um, little bit of buildup right here, but that's not bad. Little bit of buildup over here also. Uh, the inside is just absolutely perfect. The handle is perfect, no marks. All right, I've got to give that crispy puck another uh, another chance. This came out really better than expected. Perfectly even. I'm pretty pleased. Anyway, uh, all right. Well, we're gonna let it cool down, and then um, and then we'll cook something. So stay tuned. 
Okay, so all I've done is uh, put a little oil in the pan. This is uh, Sun Cocoa. I get it uh, locally and it's a blend of uh, sunflower oil and coconut oil. It's great for high temperatures. It doesn't um, smoke. It has a pretty high smoke point and it doesn't add uh, any real flavor <clears throat> to the food. So I started off on number three and then I brought it up. You can see the butter is just sizzling. And let's see how this very smooth bottom is gonna handle some eggs. I have a feeling that it's gonna do really well. This is only uh, one seasoning on my part and then of course uh, the folks at Field seasoned it one time also. So even though the pan's hot, it's still perfectly flat on the bottom. There's no wobbling or anything. Holds its shape well. You can, you can see it's not entirely heating evenly. I've got some cooler, a cooler area right around here, but I mean, there's no sticking. Let it uh, let it cook for a minute. I'm pretty happy. I probably won't use this pan for eggs very often. I just did this to to see you know kind of the stick test. Um, the sides are a little bit too high for, for doing this. This would be great for grilled cheese, uh, you know, making uh, sauces, searing uh, meats. And this handle is actually quite cool to the touch. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit and it's performing really well. Eggs are sliding around. So that's one seasoning in the oven no inside seasoning and and they're cooking great i'm pretty happy all right well there you have it i'm gonna continue to cook these got a little bit of sticking right here but overall i mean that's that's just not bad at all Yep. Okay, and here's the surface after a light cleaning. Just a quick rinse in hot water, and then I uh, put a little oil on it, and it's ready to hang up. This will be my go-to pan if I need to go from the stove top to the oven. I seared some fish the other night. The fish was pretty thick. It was almost two inches thick. And uh, seared both sides, put the pan in the oven. Uh, I used a different pan. This will be the pan I choose to do things like that anytime I have to uh, go into the oven. Because of this short handle, the handle does get hot. It stayed cool while cooking, but uh, when I went to pick up the pan to clean it, uh, the, the heat had transferred into the handle. It wasn't too hot to touch, but I could see how it could be. So uh, to train myself not to burn my hand, this will just be my oven cast iron pan. I have a very similar size, of course, the Stargazer that I did a video on. That'll be primarily my stovetop pan. So uh, I, I can see this pan just getting better and better. Uh, you can see what a what a great surface the the machined or you know shot bead whatever they did to it. Um, that surface has turned out great. Uh, you could see from the egg test that we did. So anyway, really like this pan. I can see it getting better and better with time. It'll be my go-to oven pan, and I'm really happy with it. So. Check out the uh, folks at Field. There's their crust. Check them out online, and I, I highly recommend this pan. I'm real happy with it. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.